have the part around? Yes, yes senior, yeah. I'm around. Ah, thank you, Abdi. Uh, we could start at least with the preliminaries. Those who are coming will find us where we shall be. Uh, nice to have you, Abdi. Abdi, take over. Thank you thank so you. much, Yeah. A good afternoon, team, and uh, welcome to our third civil engineering session. Uh, Engineer Sidera, do we have Karen with us? Uh, she's a uh, send apology. Uh, she'll be here, I think, the next six minutes. So maybe we can start as uh, she's coming in. Okay, I would like us to start with a word of uh, prayer. Uh, Engineer Sidera, can you lead us in opening prayer? Kindly. Thank you. Thank you. Let's uh, bow down and uh, pray. Mighty and ever loving Father, we humble ourselves before you this afternoon, trusting and believing unto you, O Father. Lord, we are here as professionals, King of Glory, asking you for direction, asking you, Father, that you may grant us wisdom from above. We pray, Lord, for this mentorship session, O oh God. Father, there's nothing fulfilling as holding a hand so that we walk together as a family, O oh God. We pray for all the engineering fraternity in this country, O oh God. We pray, Father, that you may, you may give us the skills and the ability to do what is right before you and even before men, O oh God. We pray, Father, that you guide us and you protect us. For this session, O oh God, be with us walk with us, O oh Father, and all that is ahead of us. May your presence go with us. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you for that uh, good prayer, Engineer Sierra. Uh, do we have uh, the chair of uh, membership committee with us? Uh, I'll be representing him. Uh, his, his flight has delayed, so he will be, he's basically on air to Eldoret, so I'm standing in for him. Thank you so much. Kindly to the rest of the co-host, uh, uh, kindly assist on muting the rest of the team that are coming in. And uh, kindly to the rest of members, uh, it is always good to show decorum. So try as much as possible not to put your video on and try as much as possible to ensure that you are muted until you're given an opportunity to either ask a question or to present. Kindly, let us observe those few rules and let us show decorum. Uh, it's not good when uh, we kick you out of the platform. We don't want to do that. We want each and everyone to at least benefit from this program. So I will ask that from you. Uh, so that now we can have uh, homogeneity in what we want to do. We don't want an instant where we are disrupting our panelists or presenters. So thank you so much, Achola, for that. Uh, I think uh, we introduced the session. Uh, welcome to the third civil engineering session. Uh, this is a platform where we meet with mentors and panelists for purpose of their transitioning and for purpose of uh, professional growth and development. Our, 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 What we are planning to do is we want to transition at least 1,000 GEs or 1,000 PEs. And with those few remarks, uh, let me ask uh, Engineer Paul Ochola to give an opening remarks on behalf of the membership uh, committee chair. Welcome, Engineer Ochola. Yeah, thank you, Abdi. Uh, welcome, everyone, on board this afternoon. This is uh, the third civil mentorship uh, Forum. It's all geared towards uh, towards uh, making making it a bit uh, making it easier for our colleagues, uh, uh, graduates who graduated from our universities with uh, with uh, degrees in engineering, so that they can transition from uh, from being graduate to professional engineers. So the uh, from the from the position of the chair of the mentorship. Uh, mentorship uh, membership membership at IK engineer Eric Ohaga he's, he's very passionate about this particular aspect so we have 
civil has now kicked in. Uh, mentorship also is taking on for, for, for the mechanical. Mentorship, a similar mentorship program also exists for the electrical. We are happy to have all the graduate, all the graduate, the graduate members and graduate engineers who want to make it, uh, who want to transition to, to, to become professional engineers. Our, our mantra, our hashtag is a thousand, a thousand GEs to PEs, and uh, we are supposed, we are here basically to demystify the process the process of registration of becoming a PE, so that at, uh, at the time that uh, you are basically appearing before the panel, uh, you, we are all confident enough because we are essentially, we are colleagues. We are colleagues within the same industry. Uh, you, uh, the, you, the various engineers who are still graduates, you have been charged with responsibilities uh, wherever you are. So, so what needs to happen is just, just for us to give you the framework, give you the confidence, give you the guidelines as to the expectations so that when you appear at, uh, at, the, at the interview panels, it is much, much easier. It's a lot better. Documentations, the, the documentation constitutes around 30% uh, with the training and experience being 10, 10%, and then the project documentation is 20. That's just documentation. Uh, the main interview takes 50%, and then after that, we have the last 20%, which is more or less. We give you an engineering essay, and the engineering essay, we don't ask you something from, uh, from the line that you have not been working in. Depending on the content, the content of your training and experience and the content of your project, that's where we draw your engineering essay from. So it's not complex. We are basically supposed to demystify together. When we are many, when we are many, and we are being guided, it, it is much, much easier for us to work together. There is also the other aspect whereby we are we are uh, we are more or less uh, we are encouraging all our graduate engineers to look for a professional engineer who is a mentor. So each one of us in the forum, who is a graduate engineer, can you please look out for a, a professional engineer? As who, whom you can basically tell us that, yes, this is the professional engineer that I want to work with up to the time that I pass the interview and I acquire the license to be to take what is called a legal position, a legal position whereby you can be legally bound, uh, you can be le legally bound for the practice of your, your engineering. So we encourage all of us, look for a professional engineer and uh, get a professional engineer and uh, give us feedback to the coordinators. We need this feedback. Uh, of course, Abdi will advise us uh, who the coordinators are so that we get each one, each graduate, each graduate engineer in civil being marked. We know, we know who your mentor, who your professional engineer is, even on this particular journey. In a nutshell, three to four months is enough from beginning to completion. Uh, the training and experience is something which you basically borrow from your civil, from your, from your, uh, from your CV, and uh, it only requires seven days. Within seven days, you should be able to have your training and experience the document ready because there there is nothing that we all know that right from the time we started, we graduated from university on this particular date. After university, I joined this particular company. After this company, I joined this particular company. After this company, I probably I left the company and I was just job seeking for a certain number of months. From job seeking, then I went into this company again. From this company, I went for further studies for a certain period of time. And as I was, when I came back from further studies, I came back and got employment again in this particular position. And from that particular position, this is how I progressed. That is all for the training and experience. So training and experience, you can literally complete that training and experience template with your eyes closed. So that one should not take much of a time. Now, when we come to the project, uh, the project reports, that's normally where we find uh, a little bit of a challenge. But the challenge is not because we don't we don't know what what needs to be done. It's just because of our, our understanding, and that's where we are there to guide us. Uh, we normally there is normally there's the format that we require. You introduce you introduce the you introduce the background, you introduce the background of the project. After introducing the background of the project, you define what the problem statement is. 
and after you've defined the problem statement, you tell us what the possible solutions are. Of course, in any, in any situation as an engineer, there are normally more than one, one solution. And as you, as you analyze those several solutions, uh, you end up with uh, you you end up either making a, a decision that is based on technical viability or uh, financial from a position of financial consideration. And sometimes you discover that uh, for you as an engineer, you have done your analysis, but now the aspect of making decisions from an engineering perspective, you would recommend you would recommend from a technical perspective, this is the solution you'd want to go for. But because of other considerations that are beyond your beyond your beyond your limits, they are external to you. You may not necessarily be able to go that particular direction. So what ends up happening is that uh, so after that you enter into the design phase. We are very keen on engineering uh, here. We are very keen on your in engineering argument. We are here to assess the engineering principles, the engineering concepts. How did you employ your engineering skills, engineering arguments in the design of your solution in your project? Remember, we all come, we all have projects, but the implement, the final implementation of the project, how the project is implemented is the output of a design. And that particular design, that is now where the real engineering is. So we are mostly interested on the design. You as the engineer, you go through the design process. As you go through the design process, that's where we assess you. Ultimately, the project may not necessarily be implemented, but the project you can finish the design and the design is a, the design probably is waiting for, 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 the, for, for funds for funds to be approved. But the argument here is, is that you really you, you, you are faced with a real, a real, a real life problem. Uh, you might have been required to probably construct, construct a multi-story building. So you might be having a structural, as to you might be coming from a structural background. There's a building that was supposed to be brought up and then it started. You as an engineer, as a structural engineer, you are, you are brought in. Uh, to, uh, to consider the design components. From the design components, you come up with your BQs. You may also be somebody on uh, from highways. Of course, there might have been need to probably to probably construct a highway uh, between uh, between that. Uh, uh, you went through the motions of uh, designing designing the road and everything pertaining to that particular road. But at the time of funding, you may not necessarily, it, may, it might still be the process of awaiting budget allocation. So those are water and sanitation. There could, be, there, there could be a project somewhere that you are given. And that particular project, you define the background. It's a real life problem, water system or a water and sanitation system for a certain county. You are given it to design. What were the design parameters, the design considerations, and all that? So that is what we seek to. That is basically what we seek to understand and pick out from you. That yes, uh, you've adequately. Are your calculations correct? Are the assumptions that you make are they correct? Is your argument? Are your arguments and your are your arguments proper? The formulas that you make accuracy matters to do with safety. Matters to do with protection. Do you take protection and safety into consideration? So we are here, and from uh, from the panelists, our 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 joy and our consideration is not to refer you people back. No, our intention is to make you people become better engineers than ourselves. Remember, engineering engineering and engineering principles are more or less evolving each day. Uh, the younger generation right now. They are better. They are. They are. They are. They are. They are different ways of achieving the same same goal. A lot is taking place in the world, but you are the people who are supposed to take over after us, and come come into the professional onto the professional side, uh, become become leaders and influence matters of policy, influence matters of engineering. Thank you so much. Over to you, Abdi. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Engineer, for those uh, uh, few remarks. Uh, we truly appreciate uh, you really explained it very well. Uh, for purpose of capacity building, uh, 
we will hand over this session for moderation to uh, Engineer Diana, Karen Bakita. Karen, are you with us? Karen? Hello, Abdi. Hello, yes, I'm with you. I hope I'm audible enough. You are more than audible, and I think I'll hand, I'll, I'll hand over the program to you so that uh, you can uh, moderate and uh, maybe uh, give uh, the other panelists. And I believe when I call upon panelists, kindly just give a, a, just a brief introduction, maybe your name, your discipline, and uh, the area of your specialization so that now we do not lose a lot of time. Then we go, we continue with our program. So we may call upon you to take over from now, then we can uh, have our engineer to present. So today we are going to tackle the uh, highway perspective. So we have an engineer who has benefited from our program and he has passed. Right now he's a professional engineer. He's going to take us through his training and experience report and also he's going to take us through his project report just to give hope to the rest of the team. But what we are saying is if you benefit from this program, kindly come back and give uh, back to society by at least mentoring others and be part and panel uh, part and parcel of uh, our mentorship uh, group so i will uh, give it to you karen maybe you can invite engineer yasa sotani and engineer petronila for good because uh, and we also have engineer charles just to say uh, uh, one thing and kindly let us be brief so that we can continue with our, our session thank you so much karen over to you Okay, thank you, Abdi, and thank you all for creating time to join our session today. Um, I will ask our panelists kindly to unmute themselves and give us a brief introduction of themselves and maybe just a few words to the people in the meeting. Allow me kindly to begin with Engineer Petronilo Good. Engineer, please feel free to unmute and just say a few words to the participants in the group. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Engineer Petronilo Good. I'm a registered professional engineer with the Engineers Board of Kenya. I'm basically in water and sanitation. I have an MSc in um, hydroinformatics and an MBA from uh, Strathmore University. And uh, I'm here to support you. And I just want to tell you, nothing is impossible. You can uh, become a professional engineer, but you have to have the will, commitment, and uh, your values have to be right. And uh, go for it. It will open all the big doors that you're waiting for. Thank you. Thank you very much, engineer. We are indeed in the right hands, and thank you for your reminder that nothing is impossible. We take your words to heart. Um, allow me next to hand over to Engineer Justa Sotwani. Kindly unmute and give us your, your remarks. Thank you. Well, thank you, Karen, for this opportunity. I hope you can hear me. Yes, Engineer, can we hear can me? hear you. Yes, we can. Okay, uh, great. Um, uh, I'm Engineer Otwani, uh, Justus. Uh, <clears throat> I'm a consulting engineer. Um, and a fellow of the Institution of Engineers of Kenya. I also uh, serve as an EBK panelist for the Civil Engineering uh, Panel. And at, at IK, I'm a council member and the chair of policy research and advocacy. I also sit at AK as the, the chair of engineers chapter. Mine is just to encourage um, uh, uh, our colleagues here. Uh, I, and just going from my own experience, um, I've, I've been where you are, we're, we're all there. And uh, I remember before I submitted uh, uh, my reports for the EBK uh, interview, I also had uh, the kind of fears that uh, I believe some of you have, whether you, you, you know that, that feeling of, am I really properly prepared? Am I really ready? But uh, I was surprised that when I went for the interview, I started the uh, asking myself why I had taken so long to submit. So I believe that uh, when you have, um, say, four or five years experience, uh, honestly, I want to believe that you are ready. Uh, just be confident, be self-confident. And um, now that uh, you have the advantage, we never had this advantage of this kind of mentorship. Now you have the advantage of uh, sitting with people who have been through this process. Uh, some of us who even sit at EBK um, panels, and we'll be able to guide you. 
to ensure that uh, you succeed. And there's a clear commitment from the um, uh, from, from the EDK chair uh, to move, uh, uh, change that equation. Instead of having only uh, 3,000 or, or less than uh, you know 4,000 uh, PEs, we want to move to a situation where we have 80% uh, PEs and uh, just a few graduates. So feel very encouraged. Um, maybe the last comment I would like to make uh, is uh, to encourage you uh, through uh, your coordinators, please submit your reports in advance. Uh, I think you are aware that at EBK, those reports, we receive them about sometimes even a month earlier. You know, that gives us time to go through your reports. And then when we have a meeting like this, we, we're able to give you just quick comments. So each panelist can give you comments on, on their report. Uh, it will take a shorter time and we come and be able to assist more in that manner than when we are going to the report for the first time on this panel. So feel most encouraged. Back to you, Bakita. Thank you very much, Engineer. Your comments are well noted. Thank you for your words of encouragement. And moving forward, we'll be encouraging the, the presenters to submit their reports beforehand. Uh, next, allow me to, to bring on Engineer Charles, Engineer Charles Osore. If you're with us, kindly unmute your mic and uh, and give us a few remarks before we officially begin the program. Thank you so much, Engineer, and thank you, members, for this opportunity. My name is Engineer Charles Quena, and I think I'm uh, one of the beneficiaries of this program. I was one of the graduate engineers who did uh, a presentation of their reports, I think, in the first uh, session we had. Uh, that was sometime either last year or 2020. And uh, I must say that it really benefited me, and that is one of the reasons why also I felt like it is good to also come back and talk to the other GEs and give them uh, the encouragement that it is it is doable. Uh, I was able to go through the process. I was able to face the panel of uh, EBK uh, last year, and I was uh, I was successful. And uh, I think uh, one thing I need to encourage others that. It is very much doable. You only need to, to go for it. Uh, you need to avoid postponing. Uh, and and, 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 and uh, what I always tell people is that uh, you cannot achieve if you do not try. Uh, you know, when I, I graduated in 2016 from the University of Nairobi, uh, some, some, some members used to tell me, no, you, it is still very early. Wait until it is five years or six years or 10 years. But you see, you, you give it a try, and then uh, uh, all goes well if you give it your best. Thank you so much, engineer. Thank you so much, Charles, for your encouraging words. And engineer Charles is one of the people who will present to us um, his report. As he has mentioned, he went through the program and he has successfully registered. So it will be good to hear from him also. And that is actually, <clears throat> sorry, that's actually the session that we are entering into. So allow me to welcome back engineer Charles. Kindly present to us your training. I hope you're able to share your screen so that we can see your training and experience report. Just briefly take us through your experience and the presentation that you made. Madam Karen, we have uh, Professor Emmanuel Kitkoriri in the house. Okay. You could just acknowledge him. Okay, thank you, Engineer, and, and sorry for that oversight. Uh, kindly allow me to welcome the professor to introduce himself just before we begin, Engineer Charles. So kindly unmute and give us a few remarks before we begin. Thank you. Professor. Okay, thanks, uh, Chair, and uh, thanks, Paul and colleagues. Uh, good afternoon. So my name is Kip Kuru Emanuel, uh, currently in Mu University, Department of Civil and Structural Engineering. Uh, my field is basically uh, water resource. So I think from my side, well, there is need also of really planting both the practice in the industry and also uh, the academia so that at least basically um, we could produce the next generation of engineers. So I think that my urge is that I think really most of the graduate engineers also, uh, it's not only that uh, we can work in the industry, but also you could get the professional engineering part and be the part of the team to produce the next generation of engineers at the academia but also we still have to link both the industry and the academia. Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. I think that is also a very good remark that we have taken that we have taken to heart. Thank you very much. Um, Engineer Charles, I believe you can proceed. Uh, I'm not sure if my screen is visible from your end, Engineer. We are seeing your screen, but we are seeing your files. You have not yet put up the actual report, but we can see your screen. Okay. Engineer, you have shared the wrong screen. So kindly share the right one and maybe minimize that folder. I'm not sure if that is okay now. That's okay, uh, yeah. Carry on. Thank you. So training and experience report, I'll go through it uh, in brief. And uh, uh, as the discussion we had yesterday, I'll be sharing the exact report I presented to EBK, where I'll also outline uh, the, the issues that came up, but, but in brief so that someone can learn from it. So that is the, 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 the cover page, which I think uh, is, is as per the format. Uh, that is a table of contents, uh, also as per the format. And then we have the appendices. We have the list of abbreviations. Uh, we have the forward, uh, norm, the, norm, the normal format, just as per the Engineers Board of Kenya recommendations. Those are my details. I signed there, of course. So uh, this is the certification. I put there the, the, the two uh, referees, one who, is my, my, who was my immediate supervisor, Engineer Musindai, and then the other one was my, my, my former boss, the Chief Engineer Rhodes. This table was a summary. And basically, the first one is the, the, the school life, the University of Nairobi, 2011-2016. And then uh, upon graduation in September 2016, October 2016 to October 2017, I had a one-year contract in the Chief Engineer Rhodes office. I outlined there the, the areas I was trained in, in brief, of course, together with the durations on the right-hand side. Uh, then for October 2017, when I was seconded to Kenya Rural Roads Authority, I wrote there my immediate supervisor, and then the project I, I undertook uh, from 2017 to the time I was presenting this. And then together with a brief of the areas that I was trained in and the design that I did, I also mentioned the, the, the research that I did and published while at, uh, well, it was during the University of Nairobi, but it continued even after that. I felt that was important for, 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 for the report. Um, from there, of course, I, I was able to mention the, the, the section of the road I designed, and it is good to mention that I only took part of the road that I was helping in supervision. I only designed from kilometer 34 to kilometer 40, so around five, five kilometers. So it's good to note that I only designed part of the, the road uh, which was being implemented. I also did some contract uh, uh, preparation with uh, MCDA. Uh, of course, also being supervised by the, the then regional manager for NARO, Engineer Musindai. And then here I gave a, a breakdown of the durations I had taken, the University of Education, practical training, the design, maintenance, and operation, and contract management supervision. And then I gave the total down there. And then here now in the detailed report on training and practical experience is basically the summary of a, a bit a bit of more of the table that I had presented up there. Uh, and then the areas that I was trained in, I was able to list there. The material testing, the materials alignment, soil investigation, the activities covered, the traffic counts and axle load survey, the pavement design, uh, construction quality control, review of engineering design reports, preparation of bid documents for procurement of contracts, workshops and seminars. I was able to, to list them there. 
and then the site supervision and contract administration also in brief, basically in brief, the material testing and quality control, the survey works, establishment of survey control points, the setting out, the leveling, basically the design in summary. Here I just gave summary, but this 3.7 is very good. I, I go a bit slow on it, on the challenges that I experience on site. And one such challenge, because it came up during my interview, I was asked by engineer Charles Obon, I uh, was one of the panelists, uh, was the issue of black cotton soil. You, he asked me, did you experience any black cotton soil? Now here, I want to mention that uh, he was very particular. The panelists were very particular. When I mentioned that, yes, we, we, we experienced black cotton soil from this chainage to this chainage, they really wanted to know how I handled and or, or how we handled, and then they wanted to know if it was handled as per the engineering uh, design uh, requirements. So, so I think that is also very particular that uh, whatever challenge that you face, you, 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 you ensure you you handle it as per engineer, uh, engineer's design uh, requirements. So that one is one of the challenges they asked me how we handle. And also they were able to outline that it is only good that we outline engineering engineering um, uh, challenges, not just any other challenges, but any engineering challenge you face uh, that may, need, uh, may, may lead to maybe the project not proceeding well or maybe the project ending up having an extension of time or any claims, such challenges are not just any other general challenges. And then I did the conclusion and then the appendices. So basically that was my part one in, 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 in summary, together with all the attachments for, for, for uh, all the seminars I attended, all the photographs, that I felt were good, I can see some black cotton there. So that is why they asked me how we handle this some engineering problem there, the girl is forming there, and how we handle that together with a few finished photos of the same sections. Thank you so much, Nina. Thank you, engineer, for thank you, engineer, for your presentation. I think it's good that you have highlighted to us, especially the points that were that were of importance during the presentation and the question of challenges and engineering challenges with the engineering solutions and the alternatives that you've provided. So thank you for highlighting that. I think at this juncture, mm -hmm. allow me to just read the question that is on the charts, which is are the IEK and EBK formats different? Then I allow perhaps engineer Paul Chola to tackle that. I think we had tackled it last time, but for the purposes of the person who has asked this question, maybe you would highlight it as well. Thank you. Engineer Ochola or any of our other professional engineer panelists who would like to answer. Yeah, at IEK, we want to make the life easier. So what we do is that uh, we peg our format on the EBK so that uh, the template that is used by the re regulator is what we try, we adjust ourselves accordingly so that the life so that life becomes easier when you are passing through iek you simply change uh, you simply change to aspect uh, transfer to, to the class of corporate member at iek then when you go to ebk you simply change that b2 for professional registration so we align with the EBK format. When the EBK form the EBK requirements, terms of template, that's what we go through at IEK. Thank you. So they are not different. Thank you, engineer. Thank you. I believe that question has been properly answered. And at this juncture, I see we people in the chat are already requesting for for engineer Charles to move to your PR presentation. So that uh, I believe if everyone feels that we would also benefit from that. So Engineer Charles, I'll let you kindly share your screen once more and present to us your PR presentation. Thank you, Engineer. I hope that is clear. I hope I've engineer, shared. Can, the, you, can you reduce the percentage a bit? Yeah, OK. Again? Is that OK? Just again. I, okay. you know? Okay. And now they are, they are there. No, 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 no. Increase a bit, increase again. 
uh, I think that, 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 yeah, leave it there. Thank you. Continue. So this was the project report on upgrading to treatment standards of Kilgore, Sharifuka, Soit, Murkan, and Mwadiki Road. Also, this is the EBK format, which has been confirmed that it is the same as uh, IEK. Of course, it was uh, submitted to engineers of Kenya. This one is standard format, so the forward, the forward, the forward, the declaration, the certification also with the two, and then the table of content also with the standard format, list of figures, list of tables, uh, list of abbreviations, reduction. In this stage, I just introduced the, 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 the project I was doing. I introduced the, the project, and then I did a, a short executive summary of the project. Uh, then statement of the problem. So uh, I was able to outline the problem that uh, led to the design of this road and the reason why the road was, was, was uh, allowed to go on. Uh, also coming up with the other alternatives that were there in case this was not be there and why this was settled on as the best design and the best road to be done. And then I had objectives where we had the main objectives and the specific objectives, did the design scope, the financing, the design standards. And then number two, uh, chapter two was the preliminary engineering and design, where I did all the preliminary feasibility studies with system of the existing board together with um, surveys and investigations that were done, the mapping of the road corridor, the alignment soil investigation, the sampling and testing procedures, the results that were obtained, that is in summary for the alignment soils, the pregnant material investigation in summary, and the results that were observed, and then the treated gravel uh, in summary also with the results. And then in summary, the specifications for the pavement that is from the design manuals. Basically, this was the preliminary design. Now, inventory of social amenities, uh, also in summary, this was the environmental uh, and social impact assessment, which is uh, very, very important. And this was done by a consultant. So I just got the information from the consultant and put it here. The hard stone sources, where we were going to get the hard stone from, and then the traffic survey together with the procedures that were taken, the traffic survey locations are there, and then the average daily traffic together with the analysis, uh, all the analysis that I did put from here. As you can see, the census period, basically I went through all the traffic design requirements as per the manual, uh, together with the analysis, and the results that I obtained in summary, of course. Equivalent factors, cumulative standard absolute purpose for traffic counts, cost mm -hmm. estimates and economic analysis, and also who to get the cost estimates for the, the one that you are designing for my case. And then now the detailed engineering design, where I now went into the detail of what I had obtained from chapter two. The design standards that I was about, uh, the pavement design standards, the geometric design standards, the standard for the logical and drainage design, I outlined them there before I went into the detail. Then the design traffic, of course, I had obtained the edit from the, the chapter two. I came up with a design for section and put it in, in this table here. The roadside slopes and side ditches design, I did that uh, with the mining formula and the expected loss. The design speed, the design vehicle, and the site distance, the stopping site distance. So basically what I'm saying, uh, you ensure that you cover all the design parameters as per the design uh, manual for the horizontal and the vertical uh, design. And then the pavement design, that was my pavement, as you can can see those the possible pavement types. There are several of them, type one, type two, type three. Before you give your recommendation on why you are settling on a certain type and why, uh, this is just a summary of what is 
thing. Then they have logical and venerable design, love design for the structures, all of them. Now, I wish to, to say something here. Uh, existing drainage structures. Huh? I was able here to list all the structures for that road. And this question I was asked by the chair in the uh, Now, my document ended up being a bit, a bit, a bit bigger than required. Huh? And in the Nyamayingi, the chair was able to outline this table. Where he said there was no need at all. Engineer? To all of this. There was no need to put all Engineer? of this. Engineer? Engineer Charles? Yes, sir. We are not getting you clearly. So if you can improve on your voice, we'll truly appreciate. Thank you, Engineer. So what I'm saying, huh? I feel like it is good I have done something on this table here. Uh, I had put all the existing cross culverts on that road. Huh? And the reason why we felt they, they, I felt they should be removed and the new ones constructed. And the chair was able to tell me that there was no need to put all of these culver, uh, culverts here. I would have just mentioned that the existing culverts were not uh, were not in good uh, in good shape, and therefore new culverts will have to be reconstructed. So this table was criticized. It's good I mentioned that. And then the, the flood prediction models uh, cause all of all the three uh, for the design of the, the structures, the box culverts and the pieces, uh, not the box culverts and the culverts. Uh, this one I was able to just do as for the manuals. There was the issue of land acquisition. It's also good mentioning because when you're doing a road, you, you, you have sure whether the existing road is sufficient or whether you need land acquisition issues because they need to shoot it of the costs. The other issues of bus bay, road furniture, passage of traffic. Now, lastly, there is the issue of bills of quantities, which I will not upload here, but which I want to mention because I was asked a question on bill of quantities. Uh, it is good to note that they will not only check Maybe people focus so much on the design, but even your bill of quantity is good, you ensure you do everything the right way because a question can come even from there. For example, from my from my side, uh, they asked me the issue of vehicles. I remember uh, I was supervising this road. This road is about 43 kilometers, but the length I designed was only about 5.2 5 kilometers. So in the bill of quantities, I had put five vehicles. So I remember when the, 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 the chair the chair asked me if the five vehicles is, is feasible to operate within five kilometers. And honestly, that time I felt like uh, like like it was not a good a good idea. And I was able to admit that honestly, if I was if I, I, I thought about it, maybe two vehicles or, or one or three vehicles. So I think it's also good to be very keen on that. The other issue of bill of quantities is on the SI unit. SI units, we need to be very careful because they were able to point out there is a, a section I used uh, the, the, the symbol uh, M for, for meter, where I mistakenly used capital M instead of small M. So it's also good to, to be in the position of know that such issues, however small they are, they, 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 they will eventually ask. So basically, uh, Jim, that is in summary of my two reports. And it's good uh, we have also outlined the, the questions that came up during my presentation. And uh, I hope someone has learned from that. Thank you. Engineer Child, we are truly grateful for the presentations that you have made. If there's anyone in the, in the meeting who would like to ask a question, we have just a bit of time. You can feel free to raise your hand and then you will be unmuted. Uh, in the meantime, uh, from the chat, there's a question whether there is a specific template for the takeoff sheets and whether every project report should have a cost benefit analysis. Engineer Charles, together with uh, all our other panelists, Engineer Petronila and Engineer Ochola, uh, Professor Kipkorir, please feel free to engineer, and also engineer Justice Otwani, please feel free to respond to any of the questions as you would like. 
um, whether there's a standard format for the template, uh, a standard template for the takeoff sheets, and whether all project reports should have a cost benefit analysis. Maybe for the purpose of time, Engineer Chola, can you give a quick response for Engineer Justice? We can give Engineer Justice to give just a quick response to that. Do we have Engineer Justice with us? Um, uh, I think that the, the, it didn't come out very clearly. It was a bit of breaking here and there, but uh, if I, uh, for what I've had, uh, there, there's this question on whether you need to have a cost benefit analysis. Is, is that a question? Yes, senior. Yes, senior. Carry on. Oh, okay. Um, I, th I think that, that uh, Ochoa had, uh, had attempted to expound on that uh, earlier uh, regarding on uh, the fact that uh, engineering problems uh, tend to have a number of solutions. Uh, now, looking at roads, for instance, when you are doing a pavement a design, you will you're looking at the available material and the, 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 the possible pavement the types that uh, you can apply based on existing material. So you find that uh, you might find uh, technically you can use um, uh, maybe three different pavement structure, structures are, are technically uh, feasible. But now you go down to the economics of it. You go down to the economics uh, cost compar comparison. So when you are when you are now deciding which one uh, you choose, now that is uh, those are the factors uh, uh, that you consider. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if that answers uh, the question or whether you meant something more detailed. Engineer, that's very well answered. Thank you very much for that for that contribution. Uh, I believe now that we are through with that first part of the of the program, we can now move on to our presenters and our candidates for the day. I'll, I'll welcome Engineer Good to kindly welcome our first presenter. Our first presenter is Mr. Paul Kimani. Uh, Engineer Good, kindly feel free to welcome our first candidate so that he will present to us his training and experience report. Uh uh, thank you. Uh, first, even before I welcome the presenter, there was a question about takeoff sheet. And uh, there is a book called Civil Engineering Standard Methods of Measurement. Uh, I will try and um, look for the one I have and maybe possibly post it to you on, um, on this wall tomorrow but there could be an advanced version. Uh, I think that uh, what I learned is that uh, most of us uh, young engineers may not have had the opportunity to learn how to do the BOQs. Uh, you're relating them to the drawings. And so it is important that uh, you do what? You are able to go through that. It gives you an idea. It gives you how you actually do the takeoff, how you do the codes, and uh, it has a standard way of uh, doing the, coming up with the bills of quantity. And it's quite a good document. I'm sorry I'm away. I'm away in Kisumu. But uh, tomorrow, when I come back to Nairobi, I will uh, try and see whichever version of the document I have I share it on the wall, then uh, you can always uh, look for a much updated version. Thank you. So I will uh, welcome the next uh, presenter to make their presentation. And then I will uh, request my senior, um, engineer Paul Ochola, to guide the session. Thank you. hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Paul. You can project your training and experience. Yeah. Right, I had to do that.
probably you have projected the wrong thing. I think uh, someone else is projecting. Kindly try again. Can everyone see this? Yeah, now it's okay. okay. You can minimize this, the percentage. Is that okay? No, up there. That, make it 100. I carry on. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I'd like to thank the senior engineers uh, who are here to mentor us for this time, and we appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate it personally in advance. I'd like to present my first report, the training and experience report, and this is the cover page. Uh, if I'm going too fast, please, uh, you can interject. Uh, Paul, I want to interject. Huh? Let's yeah. go back to the cover page. Uh, I would like all the young engineers to understand why do you use a logo? You're presenting a document to IEK and uh, you're presenting it to become a corporate member. This is a corporate ID. I do not think that uh, it is proper to use the logo. I know that uh, as, um, I will admit that when I presented my document, it's possible that you could uh, you could use the logo without knowing, but uh, with proper guidance, the logo belongs to IEK. The logo doesn't belong to you, Paul. Okay. Eh? So the logo should be Not there. Anything. Thank you. This will be corrected. Okay, Paul, just go to the top. You are seeing part one? Yes. Yeah, you remove part one. That's okay? Yes. Okay, you see the logo? Yes. Yeah, you are going to remove the logo because the you know the report does not belong to IK. That's all, that's fine. Yes, yes. Yeah, this is your own report. When you put the logo, it gives an indication that uh, it becomes an IK report. Not in, Let's proceed now. Not in, not in. Yeah, hold it now. Yeah, uh, it's good work you've done. You can see the hyphens, yes. AGL, and then you can see a hyphen somewhere. Yes. Yeah, you'll remove the hyphens, huh? Yes. That's okay? Yes, sir. GH, are your alphabets in, al uh, are they in alphabetical order? Uh, okay. That's okay. Let's go to the top okay. of abbreviations. Okay, uh, that's okay. Let's continue. I'll reduce the size here. Okay, reduce. Yes. Now, uh, it appears this part appears to be in landscape. That's okay. Is it possible to have it? Anyway, let's leave it the way it is for now. Take us through. Okay. Now you've seen table table one point one. Yes. You can see you've started uh, with one point one point uh, dot, one dot summary of training experience. Then there's a whole sentence there, uh, which also is describing the same thing. Then you're having table one hyphen one. So there's a lot of redundancy. Okay. That's okay. So you may want to retain only one dot something. You remove the entire sentence, then you remove the title table one hyphen one. Okay. Yeah, good. Okay. It's because you basically repeated yourself. That is not a engineer. It's not a. Yes. Okay. You can see the column of employer stroke institution. Yes. Yeah, you remove the these, they are in bold. You can see the bold. Yes. A Gatton University is in bold. Yes. Yeah, so remove the bold. And you can see the border, the borderlines. Bold in 
terms of the institution. You see Egerton, Aegis root, sector root, all that is in bold. Yes. You can see that? Yes. Yeah, the only part that is supposed to be in bold is the header. Okay. You are good? You are good. You see the, you can see the, the line that you've used for your borders? Yes. You can see the, those lines? You're talking the about thickness? Yes. Yeah, you have used a double, double, double thickness. Uh, so you need to go for the basic one, the ordinary one, because the, that thickness for the border lines is, it is a bit screaming, it appears to be bold. That's fine. We are good? Yes. Okay, you can see where you are on attachment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, much as, remember you are not a trainee, there you are a student. That's okay. You are an undergraduate student, Aegis Root, Sector Root International. You are an undergraduate student. That's fine. Yeah. So who was your overall supervisor? You appear to have had two supervisors. Here was uh, you're talking about the uh, engineer Sale Papia, yeah. Uh, Papia. So yeah. you see the details of BSC Civil Inge Registered Consulting, MIEC. Eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just remove those additional or the additional, just remove, leave it at the name, engineer Sale Papia. Okay. Yeah, good. That's noted. Okay, let's go down. Let's see how, okay, let's go to your, the, the period. You see the period? Mm -hmm. yes. You see March, March 2009 goes up to January 2010, right? Yes. So we presume that, uh, yes, even if you completed January 2010, you pick it from the next month. Okay. So the next table at NJS should be February 2010. So you finish, you finish a place in February, you start the next row in March. Okay. You finish, you end it at March, you, you start the next one in April. That, that's yes. okay? Yes. I'll pay attention to that. Okay. I took part in topographical survey. You took part, you took part. The, you took part. There's something around you took part. So, yeah. yeah, we need... You carried out you carried out topographical survey. Okay. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, let's go down. Yeah, remember all those uh MIEC, BIEC, FIEC, uh, to Tatoa. Okay, let's go to the next uh, page. Uh, you enrolled for a master's in, at Moy University. Is that correct? Yes. Just go back. Uh, key units included. You are seeing the key units? Yes. Key units included hydroinformatics. Now, on the table, you are supposed, we are supposed to have what we call just a summary of what you captured. So the K, the details of the units need to come in the detailed section. That is section 2.0. Okay. We are good? good. I can That's fine. Whole, I can remove the uh, whole section from key You see key units included hydroinformatics. Yeah. There we, all that we require there is I enrolled for an MSc course leading to award of degree in masters in, in ma, masters in engineering with specialization in water. Okay. Uh, the course units now will come to the detailed section. Okay. Yeah. Let's proceed for progress. Let's proceed. So you'll remove all those MSC, BSC, those ones you'll remove. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Let's continue. Okay, let's continue. You can see you have one, 1. 1.1 is summary of time spent, so you don't need to repeat it, uh, table one hyphen two. That is a redundant statement. So you, you delete that table one hyphen two. 
uh, you take it away and then you move straight to the table. Yep. Now, you see practical training. Yeah, practical training may lead, may lead you down. It may be a problem. Uh, the minimum number of training that are required, there may be 24. So that practical training is more on the job training and should be a minimum of 24. Noted. That's fine. Noted. Are you able to pick out where you did undergraduate training and uh, no postgraduate? Yes. You're seeing there on the job training. I've seen on the job training. Yeah, there are six months. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, let's go back to the to your table. I want you to count on the job training immediately after university. Yeah. Okay, you start, who was your first employer? My first employer was uh, MA Engineering Associates. MA Engineering Associates. How many, how many months did you sp spend there? Nine. You spent nine months? Yes. So essentially, yes. Uh, you are not holding a substantive position. So of those nine months, Mm -hmm. Would you like to consider them training on the job training, or you want to consider yourself as having known what is supposed to be done? Okay. Because I was fresh out of university, I think this was more highly highly guided and supervised role. Yes, you get where we are coming from. Yes. Yeah. So we need we need that on the job training to come out. And uh, NJS consultants, how many months were you there? So Twelve months. 12 months. What was your probation period? Uh, it took uh, two months. Two months. So the two months you can take as your training. That's okay. okay. At Terrazzo. Yes. So here, uh, how many months were you there? I was there for 18 months. 18 months. What was your probation period? Uh, I didn't specifically assign me a probation period. But, mm. uh, but you spent some time yes. acquainting yourself with what, how things are done. Yes, true. Whether it is two months or three months, you underwent some training yes. on the job training. That's okay. Now, when you went for postgraduate Moi University, was it a full time job or was it a part time job? Uh, it was a full time. It was a full time job. Yes. Okay, continue. At Todd Civil Engineering, how many months were you there? I was there for 33. 33 months, huh? Yes. And this time around, you are handling a water project. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Had you handled a water project before that? A smaller one. A smaller one. No, not of this scale. It was not of this scale. Is that correct? Yes. So of those 30, of those 33 months you spent, you spent some time on, on the job training. Yes. That's okay. Yes. Those may be around six months so that you could be held accountable. Let's go to uh, Unibe Construction. Yes. You see Unibe Construction? Yes. Now, uh, that was also another water supply problem. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, had you mastered the act? Uh, yeah, you may require two months of on the job training. Yes. Or if you feel that you are adequate enough to take responsibility, there may be no on the job training. But the message I'm simply putting forward yes. is that uh, you need a minimum of 24 months of on the job training. I've gotten the message, uh, yeah. Okay, so let's can, let's continue. Okay. But you've seen how to go about it, right? Yes, I have. Okay. Yeah, internships, uh, the internships are not considered for on-the-job training, just to answer that person. Okay, let's go down, scroll down. Now, uh, something is missing. You can see 2.x. You see two, you can see detailed report on training and practical experience. Yes. Yeah, so we want you to put there 2.1. Is this your Word document or it is the PDF? It's the PDF, but uh, do you would, would... Yeah, so there we need to have 2.1. Are we there? Okay. Then 
May 2009 becomes 2.2. But the 2.1, that one new in a back, you also saw it. Sour. And the 2.2, you know, what we shall have is 2.1. And uh, the 2.1, you will cover 5th January 2005 to, oh, yes. oh, okay. to is it December, to the, the year that you graduated. That was in 19th December. Then you will put a full colon, university, university of this yeah. and this. That's OK. Yeah. Now, the, you, you can see where you did, you, you can see the courses that you did. Yeah, if you look at the courses, Applied Hydrology, Structural Design, I graduated with a honors, blah, blah, blah. Did you have a final year project? Yes. Yeah, so you need to talk about your final year project. Are we there? Yes. Who was the head of, uh, who was the head of uh, civil, civil and environmental? Or you didn't have a, a head? Engineer Karogo. Engineer Karogo. Now. And who was the dean? The dean was uh, Dr. Mutua. Dr. Mutua. So you, you limit yourself to the head of the department, and that is uh, the head of uh, civil engineering. Okay. The dean is in charge of a much broader, of a much broader uh, portfolio. Yes. OK, let's go down. Now you have not spoken about you have not spoken about you've not spoken about uh, attachment. I removed that because uh, of the words were getting too much. The words? No, don't worry about the words. Don't worry about the words. I That's okay. That, but... The three thousand to four thousand words, yeah. because the reason why we 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 tend to put limits is so that uh, engineers speaks the engineers talk more using diagrams engineers talk more using diagrams uh, diagrams that's fine Include yeah. the, uh, do you need the internal attachment of the external one? yeah during your university period you went on attachment that's correct yeah so those attachments you need to let us know because they continue they constitute they constitute part of your unit courses. That's okay. Yeah. Let's go to the next part. So May 2009 to January, that will be 2.1. That's fine. Yeah. Now you can see the table that we have. And that becomes 2.2. becomes 2.2. You see that table? You can see the Kinale water supply? Yes. That title? Yes. Yeah, see that title and you can see the table there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one you need to re remove so that you describe the project in your narrative. Mm -hmm. For my first employment upon graduation, I joined MA Engineering Association is supposed to be capital A. Are we there? Yes. From 2009 to 20 to January 2010. Yes. Uh, while in this employment, while at MA Engineering, I was assigned to the I was assigned to Kinale Water Project and Kwan and Kwaronda Water Supply Project. Mm -hmm. My supervisor for these projects were was engineer, engineer M. Karanja. And the duration of the project was was from May. The period of the project was from May 2009 to January 2010. Details of the projects, you continue with the way you have done. So it means we remove Kinale, and then we remove that table, but you talk about it inside the narrative. We are good? OK. Yeah, let's go. So let me just uh, let notice I have to remove all of this. Yeah. Okay. So you will talk. You will talk about it inside the details. So once you've introduced it, mm -hmm. uh, it will come in where. Just go up. Go up. Yeah. So after that, once you have introduced it, 
uh, I was tasked with needs. No, you, don't, you are not tasked. You carried out needs assessment and the preliminary design of a water supply system. You are not tasked. You carried out a needs assessment and the preliminary design of a water supply system. Community-based committee. You also are, you, you, you attended community-based committee mobilization, and you also carried out sanitation training for Kinale Water Project. I further, I further carried out engineering survey, pipeline design, a borehole uh, seating, hydrogeological water resource, community-led total sanitation, training through participatory hygiene and sun sanitation. You've picked it? Yes. OK, let's go to the next page. Uh, so where you have the word task, I'm seeing you're using the word task. You are not task. You carried out structural design. That's fine. Yeah, because when you talk about task, it means that it's like somebody had to stand in front of you so that you work, but you're interested in that. Yes. Are we there? Okay, let's scroll down. So there'll be 2.3. Uh, 2.3, you will do the same thing. I'll remove this. You remove that and speak about it inside yes. the project. Yes. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, so inside it, you can talk about all those people. So, 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 so me, team leader. Engineer Ongeri, BSc, Civil Engineering, Mia Kandifia, he also has others, you can talk about them. So in January 2010, up to December 2010, uh, I joined I joined NJS Consultants. I joined NJS Consultants, where I was immediately, I was immediately assigned. I, I was immediately, where I was, uh, is, I was immediately assigned a project for the augmentation of water supply system in Kapsabet town as an assistant engineer. My supervisors were engineer K. Susumi, who was the team leader, and engineer J. Ongeri, ESC Civil Uh the, the, project, the project was carried out during the period January 2010 to December 10, 2010, which, was a, which gives a project duration of 12 months. We are good? Yeah. Are we good? Yes. Okay, let's scroll down to the next page. So that becomes 2.4. Are we there? Yes. Yes, the project land was Lake Victoria Water Services Board. You've seen Lake Victoria Water Services Board? Yeah, uh, the, the water, the W in water should be capital, the S in services should be capital, and the B in board should be capital. Was financed by JICA. Uh, is it the first time you're using the acronym JICA? Is it the first time? So if it is the first time? If it is the That's first the time, that, then you may need to use it in full before you abbreviate it. Mm -hmm. That's OK. Yeah, somebody in the room, uh, kindly mute your phone. Somebody in the room with children. OK, Paul, let's continue. The scope of my duties. Are you seeing that word, the scope of my duties? Yes. In the next paragraph. I would like you to reward that particular sentence, the scope, the scope of my duties okay. covered. That's fine. Yes. Yes. Uh, this project helped me to lay a good foundation in site supervision works, especially in water supply. That's good. Continue down. Same case to this. Continue. You'll do similar. Now, uh, read for me the project. Uh, just go up. Just go up. The project was split into two lots. Lot one, is that correct? Yes. This project was split into two lots. Lot one entailed the construction of a 30 meter high dam and a storage capacity of 12 capital M and a small M 
and then a three up there. What 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 is this that you are measuring? I, I meant to mean the volume. Yeah, you are meant to you you are meant to imply the volume. We are good. So with a with a storage capacity of volume equivalent to 12, 12 double M 12 cubic meters. Okay. Yeah, good. Yes. Yeah. So the same thing where you're making reference to cubic meters storage volume. Uh, you know how to be presented. Let's proceed. Uh, read for me a challenge mm -hmm. I faced. A I, Just read for me that. A challenge I faced uh, due to cash flow problems. Uh, um, this is not worded well. Mm -hmm. I meant to say a challenge I faced uh, due to cash was cash flow problems mm -hmm. uh, leading from delayed payments, mm -hmm. uh, led, which led to regular strikes and industrial action mm -hmm. uh, due to delayed wage payments. Mm -hmm. So you've seen that sentence construction. Yes. Yeah, I need you to, and you you'll have to rewrite the entire, the entire paragraph. That's okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, read for me the next. Uh, read for me the next whatever. Read for me the next uh, paragraph. A key point uh, of my career development was handling of contractual matters and mm -hmm. correspondence for the project. Yeah, a key point of my career de development. Remember, your career continues to grow even up to this time. Is that correct? Yes. So you are not you are, you have not yet reached sixty. You have not yet reached 60, 60, Neither have you reached seventy. Mm -hmm. So that now you can talk. You, you can talk in in the past tense. Right. Yes. Yeah. So just review that particular sentence. A key point of my career development was handling. So you're talking in the past sentence, you're giving the impression that uh, you're already 60 or you're 70 or, uh, yep, let's go to the next, scroll down. So the same case there, continue. Yeah. Now, okay, continue, continue. Now go back upstairs, go upstairs. Now read for me the challenges. I read the challenges. Yeah. The challenges during the execution of work included land acquisition. No, there's another paragraph I'm interested in. Go up. My duties is the next paragraph, the scope. Uh, that one, read that scope of works. The scope of works for component one work comprises of the following. Okay, you can see the word works? Yes. Uh, why is W in capital letters? Now, you see the full column? Are the following? Yeah. Yeah, comprises of the following. Yes. There's a full stop. Yeah. Uh, is that supposed to be a full column or it's supposed to be a semicolon? Be a semi. Semicolon. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, so intake structure, the word intake, I, I, should I be capital or it should be small? The intake. Yes, fine and cost screens with a, with, a, with a capacity, with a capacity of 7,200 per day. So you can see what we are doing. Yeah. You can see the DN. You can see the DN 450 millimeters, DN for 350 millimeters. Yeah, I need you to, uh, I know that's in engineering language, but th that particular sentence, the sentence is hanging, right? Okay, yes, sure. You agree with me? Yes. Okay, let's scroll down. Uh, you can see my duties included. Yes. Yeah, capital D. Now go to the change the challenges during the execution of the works. Read for me that. The challenges during the execution of the works included land acquisition. Yeah. Uh, most pipeline routes had to traverse the expansive Belmont and Kapuzu land parcels. Mm. A lot of stakeholder engagement caused meetings caused delays. 
Do you think, are you able to rewrite that paragraph? Do you know what is, do you know what is causing the mix up? The challenges during the execution of the works included. The word included is what is uh, selling us down yeah. somewhere. Yeah. And once we've used the words included, so we have a high a semicolon. Uh, the other thing that is causing us a lot of problems is the full stop. You can see the full stop that ca comes after cost delays. Yeah. And then there's also another full stop after more delays. So establish whether that sentence is supposed to be continuous or it ends. It's supposed to have subcomponent items. Yeah. We should not have full stops. Yeah. Are we there? I'm there? Okay, let's continue. Mm, you'll do similar to that. Okay, hold it there. The main challenge in executing the project will arose due to lack of access to site due to the extremely hilly and uh, I believe we can rewrite that just uh, put an in yeah you put a clause basically there you say uh, the, te the terrain the terrain the, 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 the terrain in which the terrain in, in which this project was being was being done uh, presented a challenge presented the challenge in as far in, in as far as uh, getting deliverables to site is concerned. It's, it's, it's hilly and mountain. Uh, the terrain is hilly and rocky. That, that's okay. Yes. Yeah, but uh, the element is the fact that the pro the, the fact that uh, the fact that the project was supposed to be carried out, that is supposed to have been part of your feasibility study. Are we good? So ultimately, in your design, in your design consideration, you need to consider what is called access to the site. But to now you can pick up the hilliness and the rockiness of the terrain as being a challenge. Okay, let's continue. Scroll down. Scroll down. Scroll down. Okay, just go up, just go up, go up. I read there the key challenges. Key challenges. Go to the next page. Key challenges. Restrict timeline, stringent safety, and security protocols that can be followed to operate and move within the airport. And major challenges with groundwater while carrying out airport and installation. Now, the whole of that is those are not challenges. Okay. You're getting it. What you simply need to do is to say the site, the site being an international airport or the site being an airport, mm -hmm. the site being an airport, an airport, the site being an airport, it was sensitive. It's a, it, it, it is a, it is an essential installation, and therefore we could not just we had to really align, we had to align our work schedule. We had to align our work schedules to the requirements of the airport. Adherence and compliance to safety, to, to safety protocols in the in the in at the airport and, and detailed security procedures compared to other areas. Wow, wow, were considered exceptional items. In this particular case, that's okay. So what are we, what are we doing? Uh, so the timelines, it's, it's about the schedule, the schedule of working. You're, you, you are scheduled the times at which you'd be allowed to work. Now, are we there? Stringent safety, there's an argument here and there. Mm -hmm. Stringent safety, there's an argument because you as an engineer, you are, you are deemed to, you are deemed to be a safe, you are deemed to be knowledgeable in matter safety. 
security protocols, yes. What happens is that they're bureaucratic. So the challenge here is purely the bureaucratic nature of walking in and out of the airport. That was the, the bureaucracy. It's purely the, the bureaucracy, the red tape around, around working within the place is what caused a challenge. It's not the strict timelines. Yeah. Well, we are together. Okay, we can proceed. Okay, continue. 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 Conclusions. Just uh, just hold it there. Tell me. Mm -hmm. Do you have more than one conclusion or you only have one conclusion? Uh, yeah, so it is only one. You only have one conclusion. That's okay. okay. As outlined in section two above, I have gained considerable. So why are you retail? Why are you don't limit yourself to section two? Right? You put there, type there as detailed, as detailed, as detailed in this training, as detailed in this training and experience report. I consider myself to have, I, I have gained considerable experience. As, as outlined or as, as outlined in this, in this detailed, in this training and experience report, mm -hmm. here in above, I have gained. Are we good? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, now let, let's see what you have written up there. Now, I have gained considerable experience of over 12 years, both in the technical academic. Civil should be capital C. Engineering should be capital C. Are we good? Yeah. Uh, you see the second sentence? Yes. Yeah, uh, that sentence may, it may tear you down. That's a bit... Uh, you know the future as the future unfolds. Tomorrow you may become to be a politi uh, You may you, you may go for a political office. Is that correct? You see the future. The future is still ahead. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. You may not. You, you may not know whether you are likely to shift to shift likely from the practice of a civil engineer engineering. You may find yourself getting into politics or get, getting into some other kind of job, which is not necessarily engineering. So just review that one. And uh, I'm not so sure that you require that particular sentence, but you may, you may delete it. I hope you picked where I'm coming from. Yes. Are we there? I'm there. Okay, let's continue. Con Continue, continue, continue. Hold it there. Where, where are you? Right here. Mm. Uh, now, when you're presenting documentations, uh, colors speak volumes, right? Yeah. So do you think you can get another unique color apart from red and yellow? Yellow stands for, this is still yeah. uh, draft work. Red stands for danger. Okay. What you need to do, what you're trying to do is you're trying to pass out information. Is that correct? Correct? Yes, I'll find a, a color. Yeah, yeah. So look for um, another color yeah. because red means danger. So we don't want to be, we don't want to feel as though that like your position is one that is, uh, whatever so colors have uh, colors when how colors appear uh, basically gives a lot of information scroll down hold it there where are you on this picture on the okay yeah. uh safety you you've studied what what is called safety yes okay uh, you, you only have a helmet. Why are you not wearing the helmet? 
think I wanted to be seen on the photo at the time. You wanted to be seen on the cop photo. And which kind of shoes were we were you wearing? Those were not safety shoes. Do you think were you required to have a coat or some, a dust coat or something? Yes, I was supposed to be in a reflector. In a reflector. Why aren't you in a reflector? Uh, I think I, I, I left it for this particular time. And now, okay. you see the person who is standing next to you? Yes. Why, is the, why is the face of that person covered? Um, I don't think there was a particular reason for that. Apart from yeah, so did you have this person's permission to have this picture for a photo taken? Yeah, 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 actually, we were, I had requested for the photo when we were inspecting this section. You're inspecting? Yes. So he may not know that his picture is on this particular photo because his, his face is covered. Is that correct? No, he was aware. He was fully aware. He was aware. Yes. But uh, you review whether you need I, to retain can, this picture. I can, I can replace the picture. This picture is a shida sour. Yeah, let's go down. Yeah. 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 Okay, the next picture. Let's look at this picture. Which picture is it? Is this? And this is from the Moroni project. No, go above. Go to the next, that one. Okay. Where are you on this one? I'm not. I'm the one taking the photo. You're the one taking the, the yes. photo. Let's go to the next. That's okay. Proceed. Uh, proceed. Proceed. Yeah, Paul, this is a good trial. That's okay, Paul. Okay. I'll invite comments to my colleagues. I hand over back to Madam Petronilla and my other colleagues. Thank you. Thank you for the good presentation. And uh, what I would observe is that uh, to all to all the young engineers. I think that uh, when you're presenting a picture, try to see what engineering message uh, am I presenting. I would say that uh, Paul has been a little casual and Paul, we are here to learn. This is called constructive criticism. Uh, you cannot be telling people that uh, you wanted your face to be seen. Eh? Uh, Whoever is on the panel, whether they see your face or not, you will tell them uh, it is a requirement to wear a hat, the, the protective uh, gear. So you must always leave it on site eh? because you could be taking the photo and then a big stone lands on your head eh? from the construction site. Eh? So please uh, take that uh, very serious. Uh, please ensure that uh, your your pictures or photos are conveying a certain engineering message and you should be able to explain what is happening and uh, link that those pictures to what you're saying that for example if I was presenting I would have told the, the panelists for example on page this I did this this relates to what I'm saying. So if I say that I was supervising, this is an example of the works I've supervised and I've shown them this uh, photograph. So relate that to what you said. So I will uh, also request the other panelists uh, to give their comments on the, on the presentation that we have just had. And then we can also allow maybe comments from the other participants. Thank you. Maybe I can just uh, chip in. Um, <clears throat> as, first of all, um, yeah, that's a good trial, Paul. I'm sure you uh, learned quite a bit with that detailed uh, review by uh, Paul. There's, there's something that uh, I noticed that uh, you may need to clarify. Your degree certificate, the one that you presented, uh, if you can just take us back there to your degree certificate, Your degree certificate. 
that graduation date is uh, the graduation date there is twenty is it twenty seven November two thousand and nine. Yeah, but if you go to, to your report, uh, just take us to your summary of training, uh, that schedule uh, above there. Uh, uh, the comments that uh, you may just let's go up. It must be the first one. Um, let's go. Let's go up. All right. I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find. Uh, if you just scroll down a bit. Uh, don't move too fast. Up, up. Uh, yeah, there at. Um, you are talking of May two thousand and nine. Yes. January twenty ten. Yes. Uh, um, you are a water engineer. You're saying you're a water engineer. I think this was corrected by Paul because you cannot be an engineer until you are registered as number one. And secondly, you are still in school. I, I don't know because you graduated in November in 2009, but you are talking of May. I don't know if this was part of practical attachment or what, what was it about? There's usually a duration between you finishing your coursework and uh, when they call you back for graduation. So in between that time, I've already secured some work on this project. Okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. I think that is, um, that, 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 that is clear. Uh, I just wanted to, that, that clarification. But, but I think you get the point. You are an assistant engineer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that way. All right, so, so I think that is a, just a small comment. I had. The rest of the comments I had, Paul has already uh, dealt with them, so I'll not uh, go back to those ones. Otherwise, that's a good attempt, I would say. Thank you so much, engineer. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have another comment or questions? Uh, Madam Engineer, I think we can hand over back to Karen, unless he has a project. Yes, so, uh, yes, we are handing over to Karen, but just to remind the participants, whenever you're asked a question, as you're answering the question, think of the consequence of your answer, uh, because uh, your answer could... Uh, lead you to show that uh, you're not taking the profession seriously. So always think that why am I being asked this question? How am I going to answer it in uh, the engineering language? And um, oh. what are they oh. <laughs> Please mute. Can mm -hmm. we have the next presentation? Eh? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tim. Our next presentation is still by Mr. Kimani for your project report. I believe you can proceed on the same kindly. So this is my part two report. I just go up, just go up, go up. Uh, you, you can see that arrow? Yes. You see that uh, that arrow you've put it in blue. Yes. And then you can see something vertical in blue. Mm -hmm. On the left. Yes. Yeah, I just I may need you to review whether that one is in the template, right? 
And then you see them, uh, you, you see the, the flowery part of the bottom left. You see the flowery part yeah. of the bottom left? Yeah, yeah it's, it's good. But uh, for this one, just remove the, uh, the artwork, remove that, those artworks. Yeah. 